Finally, here are the definitions for the d orbitals. These occur when l is equal to 2. Because of the bounds imposed by the fact that a component cannot be greater than the vector itself, m is restricted to being between 0, plus or minus 1, and plus or minus 2. As a result, there are 5 d orbitals. Like the p orbitals, we want to use real wave functions to describe these orbitals. Looking exclusively at the angular part of the solution for the hydrogen atom, when m is equal to 0, we already have a real wave function. And since it's oriented along the z-axis, we call this one the dz squared orbital. The other four come from linear combinations of the m is equal to plus or minus 1 states and the m is equal to plus or minus 2 states. This brings us to an updated list of solutions for the hydrogen atom. Before, we were just defining the wave function solutions based solely on their quantum numbers. In this list, we combine those solutions so that we now have the atomic orbitals that we are accustomed to. These are expressed in the list using the standard S, P, D nomenclature. In these solutions, the atomic number Z is also included so that they can be used for hydrogen-like atoms. In summary, the Schrodinger equation can be solved explicitly for the hydrogen atom. The energy found from the solution of the Schrodinger equation exactly matches the one found for the Bohr atom. The quantum numbers which define atomic orbitals arise from the limits imposed through solving the Schrodinger equation. However, due to electron-electron interactions, the Schrodinger equation cannot be solved analytically for atoms with more than one electron. Instead, what we do is we use numerical methods to generate wave function solutions for multi-electron systems. However, we can use hydrogen-like orbitals to approximate heavier elements with one electron.